Good evening, everybody. Happy Friday. How are you doing? I hope that you have a, had a good week, that whatever you've been up to, you have been safe, well, and looking after yourself. Uh, my name is Ashley, and I'm going to be here with you for the next hour, hosting and sharing uh, someone. It's my absolute delight to welcome the wonderful Patrick Gamble as our speaker this evening. How are you doing, Patrick? How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for inviting me on, and uh, welcome to all the people that's watching or listening in. Fantastic, fantastic. It's it's something that uh, it's it's just I've been desperate to get you on and finding the right time to do it because there are so many people who are interested in all kinds of creativity and using their creative energy. And it kind of feels like this is the time of year, isn't it? That we've been out, we've been enjoying nature, enjoying the countryside, kind of recharging our batteries. And at this time of year, people are looking to turn inward and to do some reflection, to do some work, um, to kind of do pursue a craft or a hobby or a connection to the spirit world that they may not have done before. And I know that is what you're probably best known for, is your amazing spirit-inspired artwork. So for people that don't know you haven't come across you, which I don't know if there's anyone in the UK that moves in mind, body, spirit circles that hasn't seen at least one piece of your artwork, would you be able to just give a little bit of an overview of how you came to this? Because I know you haven't always kind of born and brought up with this way of life, this spiritual understanding. Uh, no, um, I, I guess most of my life, I, I kind of lost, I, I, I didn't have any form of faith or um, belief in any form. Um, maybe in my very early days I, I did, but I kind of, I lost it. So I was generally, I kind of labeled myself an atheist. and I, I was okay in that space. And, you know, I, I guess like a lot of people, we come through life, we come through our challenges. The, the one thing I find quite interesting is that, when my challenges that I felt myself going through as growing up, there were no, there was no connection to spirit in any form, shape, or manner. Um, my life became very blissful, and, and I was in a really good space. And the strange thing about it is, when I was in a good space, spirit decided to come into my life. And and I'll be quite honest with you, I didn't kind of need it. I'll be perfectly honest because I didn't understand it. I had no connection to it. And, and then basically it came into my life with someone give a builder giving me a box of old bits and pieces. But within that, I came to party my garage and I came to this box that was just put into the garage. And what triggered it were just three tubes of paint. And, you know, a, a thought came into my mind. And at that time, it was just a, a, just a, a thought. And but the thought was to I kind of read the paints there were oils and squeezed the tubes and i thought said gosh do a silly picture um so so i kind of i i'd done a painting and um with no is basically with no intention of it being anything but actually painted the man's face uh but this face meant nothing to me um it, it had no connection in any form shape or manner um but it kind of opened up unknowingly it opened up something uh, and my life took on a changes in a way where I, my dreams become very strong, well, strong, a lot. I mean, gosh, dreams become very, very, they were deep and meaningful. And and I started to kind of see what I call flickers and shadows. And um, and to be quite honest, it kind of, it, I wasn't comfortable with it all uh, because I didn't have no background or no foundation. And in actual fact, if I'm honest about it, I was, I was very unsure of what was happening and I didn't necessarily think it was a good thing um, because I my, my lack of ignorance <laughs> my lack of um, and, I've, I, and I do feel that men generally we do have a unless we can we have a logical mind and unless we can pick something up and actually hold it we I think a lot of men can struggle we need we need something a physical object put into our hand for us to, to be able to grasp it and I, i'm afraid i was one of those people and um, because i couldn't kind of mind the logical side of what was happening um there was there was no understanding so i just pushed it away really but that was how it kind of came into my life 
Amazing. And I really, and I think what you said is just so beautiful, how it organically happened. And the circumstances came that this paint was in front of you. And because you came with the kind of, the, almost the innocence of, I'm just going to approach this with real lightness without putting any pressure on it because you, you didn't have the, the knowledge of pressure. And do, do you find that in your workshops? Because I know you run some amazing workshops. I've not yet been able to get down to do one of your workshops, um, but I don't know if Andy's on, but he said it's mind blowing. Do you find that with students as well that are looking to kind of, they've got the inkling they want to do some kind of inspired spiritual artwork and yet you put so much pressure on yourself to get it perfect? <laughs> Do you find that with students? I, yeah, I, I guess for us all, we, we have this inner expectation or, or mm. you know, our, our desires to fulfil elements. Um, I, I guess, you know, I do believe or I do kind of know that everyone is creative. I, I kind of just take myself as an example and feel that everyone has the creative source. The, the, one of the issues can be is that we wish to create like someone else. But the, the essence is, is, to, is to connect to our own source. That, that is the essence. But I'm afraid as humans, we, we like we're a bit like a, a magpie with something shiny. We, we kind of attracted to, of course, we're attracted to certain things, but that doesn't mean that we will paint or draw or create in the way someone else does. So part of it is just trying to teach people to work with their own sense of creation. Because at the end of it, uh, you, you know, to the, the world of art or the world of creation has no boundaries. It's, it's only ourselves that create the boundaries. And some of those boundaries can also be created from even our childhood or being told we're no good um, and we feel a failure. And, and there's and such terrible things. So I guess in a way is, I mean, I have no rules. I mean, I, I, I kind of in a way, you know, there, there is no right way or wrong way. And, and so, you know, the wonderful thing with me is, you know, we create by just maybe using a, a, a sponge, a rag, and some old decorating brushes. We, we create with the simplest of things and with the simplest of paint. Um, and that's where you try to get people to feel, you, you want, I mean, the one thing is that I don't gel with classrooms. I mean, I was, I didn't do school very well. So I kind of, in a way, uh, yeah, me in school, we, it just didn't work. Um, so I, I really don't want a, a workshop to feel like a, it's very hard not to, but I don't want it to feel like a classroom. Uh, and sometimes for people, if people are working in groups, they can be quite nervous and settled. So the main thing is trying to get them to feel at ease. And, and we all feel the same. I mean, I've been painting for 27 years, but I still feel the same as them. That's, that's the interesting thing. But everyone has this, we, we just need to unlock it and, and get a flow going. Um, and that's what we try to do. Wow. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. And um, it's almost a bit of a joy every time you produce a new piece and you kind of put it on your social media and it's kind of there in all its glory. And you're right, every piece is completely different. And then the the explanation that you put with it as well, what you were feeling and the energy that was coming with it and the and the download of information that you're getting with it as well is beautiful. And then it's really magical to watch it unfold underneath in the comments and everyone else reacting to it in a different way. Um, which is unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Do you find that with your artwork that um, it can come through to you in one way and you tend to find that there's a theme, that there's almost a series of work or does each piece come through completely differently? I, th I think really each piece um, can come through completely, completely mm -hmm. different. There is a difference. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the wonderful thing. I, I kind of, um, because in some ways, what it's trying to do, you're, you're trying to capture, sometimes it's, it's a feeling, sometimes it's the visual, but you're trying to capture that. So I think with every piece, there is a teaching uh, and a message, if you like, with, with every piece. And, and also for me, you know, sometimes I'm in a really good space uh, and I'm painting and sometimes uh, because of life and challenges and, you know, we all have family and, we all have everything that comes along with family as well, from, from people that are young to people that are very old. And so we're dealing with a lot of things. And sometimes, you know, we're, we, you know life can be very emotional. And, and yet, you know, I've come to learn that I can still paint. Uh, life can be very happy and I can still paint. So it's kind of like it's not just working with the image. It's also working with me 
and my feelings and amongst all these things. So it's a really, you know, we often hear, hear that art is a therapy and my goodness me, it's, it's self-discovery because we see things slightly different. That's the wonderful thing as well, because we all see things slightly different. It, it kind of amazes me what reactions, reactions to actions. And even when someone, I say in a workshop, you know, with the student and, and the board, that, that is a relationship. When you're starting a painting, you're actually starting a relationship. And, and but it's a kind of relationship somehow, not just with the image, but with yourself, because it reflects. You see, when something goes really nice, it's, oh, when something is not working right, is oh, we have, uh, and so I, it's, it's a lot of these things will trigger even life reactions. So it's kind of like, it's very, it's quite, gosh, there's a lot going on when we actually get into the creative side and working with people in workshops. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And that's what I really love is the fact that you, um, you, you talk a lot about psychology, even though you don't term it psychology, but you talk a lot about the knowing of the self and that this is not an, uh, an objective process. This, this is something which is very personal, very meaningful, um, and about tapping into that inner connection to not only your spirit helpers, but also your soul as well. Um, would you be able to speak a little bit about that, about how, how the soul speaks through art um, and you know, really, how the ancient part of the soul speaks through art? Yeah, I, I kind of... I guess it came to me in part of my early days of um, entering into spiritualism. And, and I really feel that, you know, the, the, I, I kind of say in a way, there's the two of us. There's my, yeah. there's my physical side, uh, there's my physical side, and there's my soul. Uh, and, it's, and it can be very, don't get me wrong, it can be quite conflicting because, you know, for one, one, one is very, one existence is very different to the other. So it's so it's kind of you know I have this physical of my body and the element that the soul has chosen to 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 live this life through the physical. Um, so we have this element of the mind, and you know well I call it the lower self and the higher self because we you know it's it's kind of but there is this this element of which we I aim to try and work with the both my my lower self and and it's and the lower self I see it as a very worldly aspect of living here. In a, in a way where the, where the soul is a higher vibration. It's linked to our intuition. You know, it's like the subconscious and the consciousness. Uh, and, and it's kind of like, so it's, it's very much that element. And we do have this soul existence within us. Uh, and it's something that I'm very, very aware of. Don't get me wrong, I can have the biggest debates with my soul. And at <laughs> times I can, kind of, you know, I'm struggling. And, and, you know, and it's kind of like, so... There, there, there's, there's, there's this big difference between a, a, a soul journey and a physical journey, but they're both hand in hand. That's, that's the thing. We're here to learn from both of them. So I can learn from my higher self, but my higher self is also learning from the lower existence, if that makes sense. So, so we, we all, yeah, we all have that within us. And and, and, and I guess, you know, in, in my early days, I was sat at my kitchen table and, and it's a very strange experience. My hands were on the table, but it, the crazy thing was it, it was almost like I was looking at my hands, not through my physical eyes. It, it was, yeah, it's a very, it's a very, it's, I don't know how else to put that, it, but there was something inside of me looking at my physical body and, um, and, and, and the hands are a very interesting thing because, you know, we, our hands, they do so much in life. So they kind of, you know, they, they get hurt and, you know, we, and we can make the ball nice. And so the hands are, they're a very working existence for us. And they're related to touch and all those aspects. Of, but uh, yeah, it was such a, it was such a, and it, I, I don't even know how long that experience lasted. It wasn't a long time, but it lasted a period, but it was very deep and so so, I, it, it, so it's, it was very aware of a, a soul looking from inside out and it was it was a moment um but i really do believe in the in the soul connection and you know and part of that soul is eternal you know the, the physical the physical side of who we are it's, it's just a vehicle 
and, and that that has been we're driving this vehicle through life and um and, and the soul will continue so it's trying to it's trying to get a sense of feeling you know whether we call it through you know whether it's gone through meditation or whatever words we use because I, I guess for words there's many words we could use but they all kind of mean the same thing and um but it really is about getting that deeper connection that deeper heart connection within Wow, thank you. My goodness, there are so many questions now um, coming to me. It's so inspiring, this discussion, and how um, really clearly you put your experience. Um, and I really appreciate that, that there's you, you get to the heart of the matter. And I'm really interested in um, exploring a couple of things with you. Um, one of the things to explore is whether you feel, um, when you're in this really close state and you're creating your artwork, do you feel that... Um, is it a conscious process? Do you consciously know, I would like to put this bit here, I, I now need to get this colour, or or literally is it just instinctive, you're picking up and just putting where it needs to go? How, what's your kind of process when you're working? I could guess in my, in my earlier days, it was more, I could probably say it's more of a trance element because I was in a space, because that space would get broken, it, it would get broken, the simplest thing would break the space. Uh, so I would drift into it, but it got broke so many times. But it was something was I was in a space. Um, I, I guess over the time it's kind of um, it's it's relaxed a lot, and it's, but it's also become stronger. Mm. And I mean, yes, it's, I've been doing it for twenty seven years, so I have um, the connection to my guides has become strong, uh, and and the knowing that it's there and so I get I had a great teacher I had a great mentor um, someone I met about three years after coming into into this and so it, it kind of like um, it gave me a foundation to work with uh, because I didn't have control over it that was the other thing so okay. I guess yeah yeah so so it's kind of like so I, I learned to well I was able to switch it on and switch it off where before it was just happening and uh, and um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing when you're living a physical life as well. You know, I, I had, a, I was a builder and, you know, I had commitments and I had things to do in life. And so, so I kind of learned to kind of, I'm not a 24 uh, seven connection to spirit. I, I kind of switch it on and switch it off now, which is, which is healthy for me. Um, so, so it's kind of in that way, um, very much working on, on that. But it's but it's grown so strong now that I'm able to make that connection. But the other thing is, when we're painting, sometimes it can come just as a feeling, and and we have a canvas, and we'll just start pouring. I mean, sometimes I lay a canvas on the floor and just pour it on the floor, onto the canvas because I, I. And sometimes it's it's on the easel. Sometimes it will come in the form of a dream. Sometimes I see it. I can be. I can get a flash. Even in my normal day, I can get a flash of, a, of an image, and and that image may not be enough to even recognise it. But I might get another flash of that same image, maybe four, six weeks, two months later. But and it gets stronger, and it will grow in a way that I can I can paint it. Um, when there's there's two elements in which I work with it is you know a private reading I guess where the discipline is, is come more into where you know you sit with someone but they bring their energy I mean they bring their own energy I just got to I just got to link in and uh, um, but there's so one side is the psychic work which is you know relating to a and the other side is the vision work and they're similar but they're they're different but they're similar uh, because a vision work is where you're 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 working on an, a vision. And you're and generally speaking, they're bigger, they're bigger canvases. Um, where the, the, the psychic work is it, it comes along with a reading, you get a painting, uh, and they relate together in whatever means and ways, and, and they're a lot smaller. Um, but there but of course you are making a you know the common link is you're making a connection uh, to, to a spiritual um, element. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. So, so many, so many questions coming and um, there's lots of questions coming in. So please do keep your questions coming. We're going to put all of your questions to Patrick, as many as we can get through, um, because this is such a fascinating subject. And I know that there are lots of people in who have been to various 
spiritual art, psychic art, inspired art, whatever you want to call it. It's really difficult to put it in a bracket, isn't it, actually? <laughs> Sometimes it's really difficult to give it a name, um, who are very, very interested in your work. Um, we can't go too much further without mentioning, and I know that uh, Jackie uh, was hot off the press to go and order some. We can't not talk about your amazing work with Steve to design that tarot deck. And thank you for bringing that tarot deck um, for people who use it in their working, doing readings, or for people that use it as inspiration. Um, could you just talk through how that came to life? How that came to life for you, just because the intricacy of some of the stuff in those cards? Um, I, I guess in a way, I, I had a number of paintings. I mean, there was one time, I mean, some of the paintings are, are large. They're like five foot by six foot. Some of them are really big. And I had about over maybe close to 40 paintings. In my, in my house and and then i um i moved house and i was able to set up a small studio gallery uh, and people would see and i went to some mind body and spirit food uh, and people because i couldn't sell my work they were like children i don't know I here, but they i don't know i still i can't let them go i'm still maybe learning from them i don't know um but i couldn't i couldn't let them go and uh, but people said to me, um, well, if you can't if you can't let them go, you know, can, 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 you know, do you do cards or anything, as in like a gift card or something? Yeah. So I, I guess because uh, printing was very different then uh, in in its production, um, so I had the cheapest form of printing done. I, I had eight postcards printed, and they were quite big. I mean, they were A five, and and then I had another eight postcards printed. So I had sixteen. And um, so I, I kind of sold these postcards. Um, but I was at an event, and I was at an event where my mentor was organising, and, and a medium came up to me, and she said, Patrick, can I speak to you about your the cards that you've reproduced? And I said, yes, yeah, sure. She says, how are you using them? And I said, I, I, I'm not. I don't. I only sell them. And she says, what? You only, why are you not working with them? So I said, well, I... I I don't know why not. And she says, well, I'm using them in development uh, because they're visual and I'm using them in workshops and development and I'm finding them very helpful. And she says, you should really think about using these cards. And she says, if you don't mind me asking, do they have, you know, do they have a title? Because I never titled any of my work. Uh, I said, well, they, they, I don't know if they have a title, but they have a meaning. And she said, would you mind telling me the meaning of them? Uh, and so I, I said, well, this is what I felt about this piece and that piece and that piece. But she said, really, you should think about you. So I, I did. I took it on board. Uh, and I started to work with those 16 cards. Um, I, I then eventually ended up with 32. Oh, well, actually, when, when did we got into the day and age of home printing and that, I, I printed my own card and I laminated them. Uh, so they're quite chunky and quite big. But I worked with them for 10 years. And that, that was so I had, yeah, I had a set of quite big cards uh, and they were all covered in paint and everything and uh, because I'd paint and do the reading. Um, so I worked with them for 10 years. And then finally I got to a point where um, with the help of someone and the encouragement of someone again, um, I got the first deck printed. And, um, and that's how it kind of came about. Now, now the deck is in its true sense, because it's took, it's took a while to get to its true essence. Um, I guess because of the lack of my, I suppose, fi finances and my knowledge of maybe putting some, or not even knowing where it was going. Um, but now there's 72 cards um, in the deck. They, um, I, I wasn't sure if to, if to print because obviously there's a lot of decks out there. So, so as just as a logical thought, I thought, gosh, does the world need another deck? And, uh, <laughs> But I, but I did go ahead and print them. Uh, they come with a sequence of colours uh, because the colour is the essence of every painting. You know, it's, it's an essence, it's a vibration. So they, so you don't only have the images to work with, you have the, the colours to work with as well. So you, you can get clusters of colours, which will also collect clusters of card meanings. So, so the cards are really, they're helping you along the, the gosh, the, the, the complexity, or not the complex, but the depth of direction within the, the cards, there are so many avenues you can go down with them to give understanding. And, and I don't say to anyone that you need to read a book about colour, because we all, 
we have colors that we are attracted to. We have we have there are we, we know there are colors and there are cool colors. And if you ask anyone, you know, what does that color mean? To, you know, I would get anyone to work with their own color scheme. It's it's because that's the because everyone is unique. You see, and and that's where I feel in a way that I the the, the, the deck is not the deck is is half the deck. The person is the other half. Uh, and, and the person's walk of, and the person's walk of life has gave them even though sometimes they can feel it's been a negative aspect because the, t- the teachings are quite hard you know we learn life through mm-hmm. hardship and struggle and difficulty so we can see them not always as the teachers but you know if you're going to communicate in the world we need to experience we can't be wrapped in cotton wool and put in a drawer we, 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 we won't be able to relate to nothing if we're if we're sheltered so we we need to we need to evolve and and generally that comes through unfortunately it comes through struggle and hurt unfortunately um, it takes us into a deeper space because you know when people are, when people are in a in a place of, of, of in a positive place they need no help. <laughs> they they are they are okay. It's only when people are in a in a depth of emotion and struggle, and if we can't relate to that, how on earth can we? And some of you know the favorite the famous famous words are, "How do you know what it's like? You haven't experienced what I'm experiencing, so how do you know?" So the more learnings we have, the more the greater the understanding. So the the cards have come around. So. You know we can work with the and, and also how people see the image you know the the, yeah. the the i'm more interested in how someone sees my image as well because the same painting can the same uh, when i had a, a, a gallery there was a, a big painting and this is this is an experience and i find everything quite interesting i'm not <laughs> one I, the same painting different people one person said to me, I find that painting quite disturbing. And I think, and that's what I thought. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't think, oh my goodness. I thought, wow, yeah. what a reaction. And it wasn't a disturbing painting, but it, but it disturbed something inside someone. Mm-hmm. And the same painting, different person would cry and say, I'm just touched by that painting now these are extreme you know these are opposite ends of the scale but it's the same painting so these are inner feelings the painting is the same painting but the reactions are different so it's very intriguing where the mind i mean the mind's a complex thing anyway it's very complex um it's, it's a very powerful source and um but it's, I, I find it, yeah, it's very interesting, reactions. And so every action creates a reaction um, from the deck. The deck is there to provoke or to create a reaction of feelings or thoughts. And, and you've got the colours as well to work with. So, yeah, they, they've, they've, they, they've been very popular. Yeah. yeah. I think um, it's, <laughs> and it's absolutely fascinating when you talk about the layers the layers in the deck that not only have you got the imagery, you've also got what it provokes in you as the reader and also what it provokes in your sitter. But I did a reading, it was only a very, very simple five card spread, but I just read the color. I didn't even look at the pictures, I just read the colors on the borders and related that to where the person was. And actually that was so fascinating because you're just going on your intuition. Um, And got to some real depth with that, way more than you'd probably go when you're very, focusing on the imagery and there's so much in your imagery to focus on so yeah it's, amazing uh, i guess in a way it's, it's you know it's perspective as well i mean i see things in the cards that i haven't seen before so it's perspective uh, and, that, and that comes as we grow through life our perspective changes and hopefully it opens up more and uh, so so yeah so there's there's a lot to and, and, I, and I like to think that the deck is a very, it's a very easy deck. I mean, the, it comes from a book, but the book is only there as a guideline. That's all it is. is it's, it's, a, it's a form of light guidance. It's about you. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. 
my goodness, so much on that. And some amazing questions coming in and lots of people reacting to things that they've picked up and kind of learning. Have they've um I love that started a relationship with your deck uh, and they're starting to get to know it um and learn to love it. Um and it's lovely just you describing how you work with your decks because um the, the, your working deck is kind of splattered with paint and uh, it's really beautiful watching you work actually as you're kind of creating and then you're pulling cards and you're talking to the person and um, it's really lovely to see the, how that all kind of works. It's beautiful. Okay, we're going to go to some questions if that's okay, Patrick. Um, we have got some pretty amazing questions in. I just want to come to, hello, lovely Helen. Um, on this subject, we will get to some more questions, folks, but start with Helen's. She's basically asking whether um, your art has changed during the lockdown, whether because of the energy changing, whether you've perceived that and how you're reacting to that um, with your spiritual artwork. Has your art changed during the pandemic? Um, I, I don't know that it's changed. I guess in a way, obviously, when it happened, um, for, for all of us, you know, we think, gosh, what is actually happening here? Um, I, I guess for myself, I took a step back. Um, right. and, and for me personally, because I, I travel a lot throughout the I'm away a lot from home. Um, so I, I guess when the actual lockdown arrived, um, I, I kind of needed to catch up on a lot of stuff, even with my own home. And um, so because I ne not necessarily neglected it, but I put a lot of things off and, and I and I really needed to sort a lot of stuff out. So I kind of went, I took a step back myself. And, and, I, and I guess because there was a lot of, um, you know, things were changing with with the structure then because because of the, the lockdown and, and we couldn't socially uh, meet anymore. Then obviously there was a big influx upon the Internet. So I just took a step back, uh, and, and but the reason why I done that was because I, I needed to sort a lot of things out um, with my home. Home, I built an extension on my home, but the extension was fine. But my the part of the old part of the house was hadn't been touched for ten years, so so it kind of like it, it needed something doing. So that's where I kind of went. I went into doing that really. I, I still I still painted. Um, to some extent, I'm not aware of any changes at the moment because mm -hmm. there's not um, there, there there's nothing that I can say I've noticed with any sign of the work. Um, probably maybe because of the impact and and giving readings, we you know it's a, it's a, it, the you know the, the virus is a common for everyone, so we're all dealing with that even with our own personal challenges as well. Our personal challenges are always there, but now a lot of us are dealing with the, the impact of COVID-19, so it, which can make some of our personal challenges even greater. So I guess on the reading side, there's been, um, it, it's, it's had an impact on people, obviously, which, which again has made their lives harder to some extent, not all people, but as for the actual paintings, there's not been a lot, not that I can notice at the moment. Okay. That's really interesting, isn't it? It's very, very fascinating. Um, and we're going to talk in a bit more detail about the kind of things that you do. You've already kind of hinted at that, the kind of things that you commonly um, get asked for uh, in one-to-one -one readings um, and some of the work. We're going to talk about spirit guides and, and all of that good stuff in, in just a little while. Thank you for your amazing question, Helen. Um, yeah, really topical um, about what is coming out in the energy and people that are working in that kind of light worker, spirit worker space, um, offering healing through various different modalities and actually some of the challenges that are coming forward. Thank you. Um, there is a lovely little, beautiful little question from lovely Sue. Hello, Sue. Sue Paul said, uh, Patrick, please can you tell her, and it's interesting you spoke about light and shadows that you were starting to see. She's starting to get flashes of light daily and around nighttime. What advice would you have for her and what what could that be from your perspective, looking through that artistic lens? I guess well, one of the simple things that was given to me at the time was uh, to ask, to ask whether, you know, um, Sue may have already put out those questions to actually give permission for that light to show itself more or to give direction. Um, so one of the things is to communicate um, and, and to ask more. Um, I guess the, the, the times of actually sitting and taking the time even for yourself to kind of, because you also want to heighten your own senses 
Uh, and so we want to we want to head heighten our senses, you know, our, our feelings and, and thoughts and everything upon that. So you know, the, the greater connection of oneself. Because I feel, in a way, when anything comes through, that is already there. The one thing that I find is that helped me was actually connecting to myself more and being open. So so where the light, where the flashes were in my early days was focusing on the flash. Um, I learned to focus on myself and to heighten my awareness so that I could get more understanding from that. Because I do feel that when the spirit is always there and, and it's just ourselves that we need to work with in order to open up more or to get into that different space of consciousness. Wow, great answer. Thank you. Sue, so yeah, I'm not sure how much sitting you're doing, Sue, but um, it's obviously a signal. Uh, it's a signal from whatever you believe is manifesting that signal to the spirit world um, for you to focus. So it's time to time to get working, Sue. Time to get sitting and connecting. Lovely question. Thank you so much. Um, there was a lovely question from Jamie, which I'm sure everyone sat at home is thinking, who's itching to get started now and pick up whatever material is at, at, at hand. Um, what advice would you give someone who's starting out on the path of psychic art? And I know you probably get asked this all the time, Patrick, but what's your top tips for people? I, I guess in a way, one of them is, again, advice that was given to me in my early days is to be consistent. Too many people give up too quickly. <laughs> uh, so it is, you know, it's, it is a development. It's, it's no different than learning to jump higher. You know, we, 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 we're going to jump over a we're going to jump over a pole and you know and, and sometimes we think i can't jump no we, it's development uh but consistency uh, that's one thing i i guess i've come to learn with myself not just through spirit but just life uh i i don't give up um so so and i aim to kind of like you know even life is a builder i want to build a straight wall does that mean every wall is straight no because sometimes we have to build it in the rain and sometimes, you know, we're faced with elements, if you like, while we're building. Um, but my aim is to build a wall straight and true. Um, but that also, you know, the, the element of the experience coming through. So the, so I, I, I aim to do the best I can. I've always aimed to do the best I can. Um, but consistency in amongst that, not to give up. It is a development. And sometimes, you know, we can have the greatest of connections and then it can feel like it is gone. Yeah. It hasn't. Gone. It hasn't gone. It's but sometimes we just have to learn to be consistent, uh, and so yeah, I would say consistency. I, again, it's very much about. It's not just working with spirit. It's working with yourself. So this this word self is a very um because we're 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 learning more of who we are. You know the the connections are there, uh, and it's and it's learning to hold a space. So it is consistency and practice. You know it's it's that's. And, and, and to ask to give permission for that side to come in. I mean, not everyone can hold an image. Not everyone sees in color. Um, you know, like it's not everyone dreams in color. Um, so it's kind of like, but we work with the tools we have. I mean, someone said to me, because I don't hear, I don't hear them. And um, I mean, I, in my very early days when I was in this transition, I, I, and it was three times, I heard my name whispered. And at that time, I had a, my son was very young, very, I mean, baby type of very young. And um, I heard my name whispered. And I actually thought it was his mum calling me, you know, she's quietly, Pat, Patrick, or it's Pat, Pat. And when I, when I approached and walked quietly up there, yes. So what, I, I'm, no one called my name. Um, but that's all I had. So I don't hear. And someone said to me that you, you need to, I need to work with asking for the hearing to come. Um, mm. But I feel in some ways we're like a vessel. And um, because the creative energy is so strong in me, this is my opinion, um, if, 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 the, if the hearing was to come, I, it, I, might have something, I might have to lose something to make place for it. This is only my take on it, the, the exchange for that. And, and I'm quite happy to have just the creative side. Um, but I, I mean, it would be nice to hear, but I did try. I did send out for probably three or four years, ask for the hearing for me to hear them. And, and it didn't happen. Then I thought, well, if it's going to, it will. But I'm not going yeah. to ask for I'm going to get on with what I'm doing because this is what I've been given. So it's, so it's learning to work. So, you know, 
whether we hear or whether we feel or whether we see, we are all seers. We're just we're seeing in a different way. A blind man has to see in a different way. Uh, he has to sense for the, for the seeing. So, so our, it's to do with our senses. So it's so no one has all of it, um, and we've all got the same amount. No one has more. We've all got the same. Uh, it's just learning to work for ourselves and connecting with it. Wow. My goodness, so much in that answer. Thank you for that. Um, Jamie, I hope that that uh, ticked that box for you. I know it sure, sure did for me. Um, and I'm interested in just going into and just circling back to what you were saying about that consistency. So for somebody who's starting out, who's feeling the, the, the urge to work, that consistency, do you need to wait to feel like you're inspired by your people and they're coming close to pick up the the materials or do you think just plonking yourself down with the materials and just playing well, I, I, yeah I, I think in a way there's you can wait for life or you can go out <laughs> and find it so it's kind of like so <laughs> so, I, so i'm kind of one to go and find it because mm -hmm. and, and, and going and finding may you know it, it's it's the learning curve um some people wish to paint but they'll find that their 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 strength is in the pencil, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know. So there are many e elements of which we can use, you know, from pencil to, to charcoal to acrylic paint. There's there's loads of different mediums that one can use. Um, will we work with all of them? No. And so it's a case of explore. It, it's it's an adventure. It, you're you're not just exploring the paint. You're actually exploring yourself. It goes back. See, you're not exploring them. They're only there to explore yourself uh, and to find yourself or to find the strength of pathway. So you may find that, you know, oil paints, they're very clumsy. Uh, they're very smelly. They're very clumsy. Uh, do, do, does everyone like them? No, not, not everyone likes them. Um, but that does, that, does that mean people shouldn't explore it? No, it doesn't mean you can still explore it. But you learn. You'll learn to work with that. Um, but the wonderful thing about it is creation. I mean, I, I do, the only thing I would say to people, um, obviously teaching psychic art, you know, the simple form is to take a pencil and paper and, and just to work with that. The only thing with a pencil is you have to push it. You you have to push the pen. You've got to get, you now with paint, paint, if you if you make it very, very, it, it's got a flow of its own, yes. you know, and we have color. Now, the only thing that I would I mean, I love color. But you know, technically, black and white's not colour. But I see it. I'm not technical. I, I just so I call it all colour. Black and white. That's everything's a colour to me. Uh, so I, I kind of so there there are differences. So I I mean I impact of colour and uh, and what it does. And I and I do maintain that everyone should at least do one abstract in their life because it's it's very much a it it's it's a mind field. It's a it's a it's yeah it's psychological it's it's the reaction it's a chemical reaction with the brain of color and energy uh, and and it amazes me between you know doing working with color and i can work with color and, and put it onto the canvas like this and it feels really wrong my mind <laughs> is not comfortable and then i can i can take the color and i can move it more if it, that feels right and i think what what is all that about what is what is that in me that's making that feel right opposed to that where is that coming from and what, what is that doing to me um and the wonderful thing is what we well what i've come to learn is that um doing the creative energy has opened my mind because my mind was very restricting so my mind held me you see, it held me in a in a space of what I thought was right or wrong. Now, in the world, my writing wrongs are not necessarily everyone else's. So they can be they can be very, especially when we get into the creative energy. We're talking creative energy. So because I feel something is wrong, doesn't mean anything in the creative world out there. It only means it to me. So we have to learn to overcome these aspects and we have to be confident enough to actually show what we are doing. We have, we have, we have to be able to stand beside it. It doesn't mean we understand it, but we have to be able to stand beside it. 
because it is a creative energy and it's coming from within. It's coming from a deeper part of who we are. So it's learning to have an open mind. I mean, you know, Picasso, you know, moved the boundaries. There's other artists with a stick man. Gosh, famous paintings. You know, that it's, 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 it's one of the things I find with professional artists, not all, you know, not all professional artists, but the professional artists that come to me, their work is fantastic. Uh, you cannot fault it. But their words, it's too tight. There is no freedom. For them to drag it, for them to do, say, a wonderful horse that's like rearing up and to drag the bottom half of it just into a load of color, just drag it across the, they can't do that because their, their teachings or their mindset are so, so they come to me for freedom. They want to release, they want, they want to release their creative because it's too tight. Beautiful, beautiful work. Not my words, that's their words. I look at the work and think that's a fantastic piece of art. Um, but they want freedom. Uh, so we, we need an element of freedom within the creative energy uh, because freedom allows us to explore. It allows us to, you know, we, we could see there are no mistakes. You see, there, there are no mistakes. There, there is only learning. So, and paint is very, paint is very forgiving. You know, not, not all paint. Watercolour paint is, 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 there's a limit. But when we get into oils or acrylic, it's very forgiving. And, um, and we can move it around. It's a bit like clay. We can, we can move it around and work and, and work with a feeling and, and work in a space where it comes right from yeah. feeling wrong. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, um, but yeah, consistency, um, finding the, something that works with you, whether it's a pencil or whether mm -hmm. it's oil paints. It's, and the only way you're going to know that is to, is to go and do it. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I was I was transfixed by that, um, and just the imagery of the the permission, the permission giving that actually when when you get the feeling that spirit wish to work with you in a closer way, and you're feeling the urge to to create something. When we talk about the pressure that you put on yourself, it's many layered, isn't it? It's not just the want to get it right, but also it's the feeling that we're blinkered into certain forms of spirit art, that it has to look a certain way, that you're either going to do autographs or charcoal portraits. But actually what you've just described is I find it so inspiring that it's just about an exploration and of your soul. And the other thing is it's, tr it's trying to give an understanding. It's trying to, it's trying to read what is also happening. Uh, and because because there are loads of messages in the creative energy you see there's that there yeah there's there's so much going on that sometimes we just put it that it's all wrong in actual fact it could be very right we're not re we're not reading it we're just dealing with our own frustration and trying to make it a certain way and it doesn't wish to be a certain way this particular piece so it's really trying to work with your because you you may find that your strength of knowledge comes from what it's provoking in you for your message rather than what it's displaying in the picture. Because you see, it's a language, it's a communication. So, and sometimes when something is really frustrating, I've come to learn that maybe someone is going through a very frustrating time. Maybe all that confusion is their life. If you're working for, if you're doing it for someone, it's not, so we get tied up in it ourselves, you see, and we put it all onto it. But maybe we have to learn, that's what I try to do. I, I don't see it as me anymore. I see it as a form of a language and it's trying to show me something. And so whether it comes out a bit out of shape, it's trying to show me something. Um, it's only me that's trying to push it back, into, which it doesn't go back into shape. So it's, it's trying to read what is actually going on. And you have to some degree, you've got to detach your, yourself a bit. Uh, it's, it's one of the, it's, it's one of, you have to detach yourself, but at the same time, you've got to connect to the deeper self. So you're, in some ways, you're detaching your lower self yeah. and attaching to your higher self. <laughs> Yeah. Because the lower, the lower self is a very it's a very logical space. That's why it wants it to be a certain way. That's what we say that is wrong. Your 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 logical self would go. That ain't no good. That's terrible. Forget it. Get back in the real world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But your higher self's going. 
create, create, create. Uh, so you've, you've, you've got you've got to get over that aspect. So one part is the picture itself, but what is it provoking? What is it? What is it trying to to reflect? Uh, and so it's it's quite hard to separate sometimes. But I guess I've just come to learn to get more in that space um, and, and work with the language of creation, and and, and not so much. I, I guess for myself now, obviously, I try to measure between uh, a sitting. You know, if we're, if we're working for a piece for someone on psychic art, I'm trying to reach a certain standard if you like mm -hmm. and it does you know and it's not a rigid space it fluctuates some some sittings that are you know take 10 minutes and they're great and others 30 minutes i wish i could have had more time uh, and and they and they've made me really work really hard but i have to read all that it's all part of the message uh, that is going to be given to that person so i don't put it on myself um, even though I do put pressure on myself because I work back to back and I allow a certain time scale for each one and, and all those things. But that's my personal choice. That's my development, if you like. Um, but it's learning, but you're trying to work inside those elements. Uh, so if you are putting something down, you're, tr you're also working with what it's provoking. And that goes into your feelings. Um, but those, the, the complication is those feelings come or, or are created from our existence, our physical existence, uh, and some of those feelings are not always the nicest of ones. Mm. But, but life, you know, maybe this person has been through something that mm. I've been through in my past. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, and, and because, yes, and a lot of times it is. It is provoking something amazing. In my early days, I used to think, Patrick, clear off. That's, that's your past. <laughs> you should. And, but now I think, I'm going to talk about this. I'm not going to talk about me, yeah. But I'm yeah. going to talk about this situation that I was once in a long time ago, and ask if they could understand that. And a lot of times they go, "That's what I'm going through." Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's there's a lot going on within this, but we we got to try to lose the restraints a little bit, or it's, but it's not easy. It takes development and tr and trust in ourselves. That that trust element. Yeah, and that Absolutely. trusting doesn't, doesn't go away. Actually, that trusting is, is it doesn't go away. You're always whether you learn to run faster, you, you're still going to trust that you can do more. <laughs> so it doesn't go away because we are always developing. My goodness, so much wisdom, so much wisdom in that. So yeah, it's not so it's not about getting hung up on the form. It's also appreciating the function that's going into the process. Wow, thank you yeah. so much for explaining that jamie's loving the answer so jamie i don't know about you but that was an extremely fulsome masterclass then on the on how to get cracking with your spiritual artwork amazing so many good questions and i'm sorry we're just not going to be able to get through them all but um this has been such an inspiring time with patrick um really 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 joyful to talk to you patrick um i've got a couple more questions one of them is around um your own guides that work with you um in your spiritual artwork do you know who it is that works with you your team of people and do you have different people that work with you with your own spirit art yeah i, I kind of like the first painting was was the image which i i didn't know of guides so i i didn't know that was took about three years to learn that that was a guide of mine so that's like my doorkeeper it's, it's almost like my door opener it opened the doorway, which I, I didn't know that, but that's what it done. Uh, I guess one of my one of my my first ones that gave me an understanding was a Native American, uh, mm -hmm. and and you know one of the things I and you know after becoming a psychic artist, I mean that's not my label, but that's what I'm labelled as. Is a, I kind of see myself really as a spiritually inspired spirit inspires me to paint, mm -hmm. um, but I'm labelled a psychic artist. Um, but the you know one of the questions that came up was why why does everyone seem to have a Native American? Well, there's what I call the top ten of cultures, and uh, and the Native American is in that top ten. It's very high in that top ten. Mm -hmm. But you see what it, what it is? Their culture gels so strong with our culture. The combination of the Native American teachings and where we are here is very strong. 
Yeah. And that may change years down. If you go to America or Canada, theirs isn't a Native American. It doesn't work there. Theirs is something else. Because, you know, you, we, can't, we, we, we need the balance of different influences. So at this moment in time, the Native influence is very, and it, well, it has been, it's a very strong influence for our culture. Um, but there are, but there are, like I said, they're on the top 10. So my first one was a Native American. And that Native American taught me basically about energy and that everything. I mean, I was learning, but he wouldn't show me his face. He said, there's no need to see my face, which really frustrated me. And um, but it, it's, the, the message was that everything is energy, whether it's a glass or a table or it's the eagle in the sky or it's a stone beside the water. Everything is energy. Um, and, and, and everything will have an effect on another. So it's, it's learning to work with the energies rather than, this makes you more aware, um, energy flow uh, and, and connecting to that. So it's, I guess in a way, the connection to the Native American was very, very strong. I mean, it took me into, I guess, prayer and thought and meditation in a shamanic way. I wouldn't say that, you know, I, I wasn't practicing shamanism, but just through the native guide, it did take me into that. And um, and I was very much learning and uh, and I did explore that element. And even it even I even explored elements of shapeshifting uh, of the possibilities of all these. I mean, you know, government used distant viewing, you know, mm -hmm. the person. They, you, I mean, gosh, you know, the governments are using people that can distant view. So, you know, when you look at aspects of this, it kind of gives you, you know, think, well, you know, you know, to shape shift, what does that exactly mean? We're shifting into what? You know, we're shifting our consciousness or we're shifting our physical. What does that mean? So I guess in a way I went down a road of just exploring with, 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 with the guidance of a native. Um, well, I had John. John was born in London in the 1800s. John wouldn't show it again. Um, the native eventually showed me himself, but John... I've been working with John for, I guess I could say, almost 27 years. And um, and he, I still, it still doesn't show me his face. In my early days, I really, I, I wasn't sure what that meant. Because in my early days, I thought, well, if you can't show me yourself, how can I work with you? Because yeah. I, yeah. I would, I mean, it made me feel a little bit unnerved, yeah. if you like. And um but I, I guess, <laughs> I guess, over the year, I mean, I really wanted to, to, to kind of like paint him, uh, and I guess I needed to paint him in my early days. And and my mentor said to me once, uh, he said to me, he said, right, everyone, I, mean, there, I think there's about four or five, everyone outside for a photograph, and I hesitated, and he said, what's the matter with you? I said, I don't like having my picture taken. I'd rather not. He says, you right. He said, rather not. That's fine. Don't keep on to me about your guide. And it's kind of like in a way, because he would rather not. And <laughs> so, so, so I guess in a way, <laughs> it kind of, so I, I guess I settled down. I, and I did settle down to work with him. I guess the wonderful thing with John um, is that, and maybe it's not the best scenario to use, but it's like, it's like two people being in two different cells. And, mm. and, and and, and, and the war divides us. But over these years, we have built such a connection, yeah. a friendship, um, an understanding of each other, that it really doesn't matter what he looks like. Because in my early days, I thought, gosh, is he deformed? Or, you know, is there something wrong with him? Or why won't he? And, uh, but it, it really, none of these things would matter because we have this connection. Uh, and that's really what it's like. So I don't need him to be painted anymore. He may show himself one, one day, um, but he may not. But I don't. I don't need that picture no more. So yeah, there are there are a number of guides um, that we have, and I have. They all they are like a, a workforce. So I relate it a bit like to my boss as a builder. You know, he had tradesmen. He had a, he had a plumber and a and a bricklayer and a carpenter, and you know, it was the team. It was the gang, so I see our, our, you know, we have a gang, you know, we have a team, and we have a workforce around us, and they're there for different things. 
they're all fat. I do believe they're all facets of who we are. You know, they're all they're all because in some ways we've had a connection in some form, shape, or manner to the past. Um, and there is a theory that you know a, a guide. You know, we we there's there's lots of theories, and some of them I I kind of think that's possible. That's possible. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but we are connected to them, uh, and you know, and, and somewhere along the way, like people, you know, they may have a they might have a deep interest to say Egypt. You know, where does it come from? These these these. these. Um, so yeah, there 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 are elements that influence. And do they always stay strong in last? No, no, they don't. They they may be very powerful, very strong for maybe even five, six, seven, even ten years, fifteen years. But then they'll they'll sit on the shelf for a while, and and another one will step forward, and you'll be working in a different way or different understandings of knowledge. And it's it's all knowledge. It's all connections. It's wonderful. Mm. Hearing you talk about the gang is um really lovely because I was visualizing that you've got someone who works with you in a very physical tangible almost a sculptural way when you're working with the oils and, and moving them around and then someone who's very precise and I can kind of visualize your your creative team around you it's a wonderful way you put it my goodness there is so much we could talk about you just even mentioning the fact that spirit guides being a facet of the god force the spark that is the eternal you and my goodness there is a whole other hour of conversation that we could have mr gamble to talk yeah, about absolutely. That. and all of that um i can't believe we're at seven o'clock already but that has passed so quickly and been an utter joy to talk to you thank you so much for giving up your time thank you no problem. thank you everybody who's put questions in and i'm so sorry we haven't got to all of them um paula was asking an amazing question about how your hands are controlled when you're painting um lovely donna phil's asked some questions about your philosophy and has art deepened it um i'm sure we'll go back and read all the questions and kind of pull some of them out so um, and please do remember as well that all of these recordings are recorded for you so if you're watching tonight or you've come in a little bit late or you want to send it on to someone who's just beginning their journey in spiritual artwork, then please remember folks that you can forward this onto them and they can come and enjoy it. Thank you everyone who's been with us. Um, we will be back next Friday from six to seven. Um, but for now, Patrick, thank you so much. I'm gonna leave you with the last word and kind of what encouragement or advice or what kind of thoughts have you got to leave people with this evening? I, th I think in a way, I, the thing is to connect to who you are. Um, mm. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, we come through life, and we can we can build our beat ourselves up for all the things we wish or we didn't do. I, I think it's reaching a time. If we could have dealt with life in a different way, we would have done. We we were standing in. It's so easy to stand in a different pair of shoes now and look at our past and wish we had done things to me. If we could have, we would have. It's about taking who we are now and embracing that. And actually, it's like a little bit like standing back to back with yourself and believing in yourself and taking the world on. That's what it's a little bit like. It's about it's about standing in your power. That we all need an element of confidence, and I don't mean a loud confidence. I mean to stand in a quiet, confident space of who we are. That self connection, um, and you know, we're constantly learning who and what we are about. But you see, if we live to be 500 years old, it's not enough time. Mm -hmm. So we really need to get on with it in whatever shape or form. Actions speak, words are cheap. So, so believe in yourself, trust in yourself, and take yourself forwards. Amazing. Thank you so much for those really wise words. Um, so many thanks for everyone who's watching. Uh, lovely Hillary's on. Hello, lovely Hillary. It's lovely to see you with us. Um, oh, lovely lady. Yeah, thank you so much, Hilary. Thank you for everyone that's joined us. Um, I'm just quickly putting in the chat um, Patrick's Facebook page. Do go and check him out. I'll put his website on in just a second. Um, go and check out Patrick's amazing work and the gallery of artwork that's on there is just stunning. Thank you, Patrick. Thank for your you. Time this evening. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see you next yes. Friday. See you later. Cheerio, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.